I'm Matsu Manislot, and today I'll be reading from a short story by Kang Wa Gil and a poem by Cha Jung Mei. The short story is called Demons, and it was published by Strangers Press as a chapbook in 2019. I'll be reading the first three pages. Tuk! A sound. I looked behind me. Nothing. Misheard, maybe? I turned back and took another step to reach the front gate. Tuk! Again. A sound like a massive rock thudding against the wall. I whipped round. This time, there was something there. Something small. But, in a flash, it was gone. Disappeared into the alleyway. An eerie sensation burrowed into my chest. As I hurried through the gate and into the yard, mother-in-law's sharp voice pierced my eardrums. Sha! Ah! What kept you so long? I approached the veranda without answering. I'd forgotten to leave work early, after she'd nagged me all morning about today's meeting, where it was to be decided when the village would gather to cook the next batch of meju. She got on my nerves like that. I was going to try and explain I had work to do and couldn't come with her, but ultimately couldn't be bothered. Too tired. It had been one of those days. The kids had ganged up and shoved a load of snowballs down Dejin's pants, completely soaking his underwear. I made the whole class stay behind after school and grilled them over who had started it. As I looked at each in turn, testing them one after the other, only Yongkwon had the guts to hold my gaze. He was clever, by far the most charming boy in school, and a bear of a ten-year-old at that, and popular with pretty much everyone. I knew better. Whenever something went down, he was behind it. As always, he wore a look of utter innocence, which, as soon as our eyes met, turned into a sneaky grin. I'd yet to catch him red-handed, so I had nothing to prove his guilt, but it was clear that Yong Kwan was the ringleader when it came to bullying Tejin. As a teacher, with only seven kids per class, you just know. Once, I happened to witness Yong Kwan full-on bulldozing Tejin to the ground, but before I could even open my mouth to tell him off, Yong Kwan beat me to it. I'm sorry, Miss Kim. It was an accident. And then to Tejin. Hey, I'm sorry, Tejin. I really didn't see you. I didn't buy any of it. I put Yong Kwan in detention, had him do a bit of self-reflection. A few days later, the mirror in the girl's toilet was covered in graffiti. Kim Mi Young equals crazy bitch. Because I hadn't bothered to make any excuses, mother-in-law seemed to take great offense. In a disapproving tone, she stressed that Mi Jane from next door had left for the meeting ages ago. Why should I care? I frowned unintentionally. She was being particularly annoying today. Mi Jane, an older lady who made a living by fixing bits and bobs around the village, had built quite the reputation for diligence. Everyone knew how to find her. By force of circumstance, Mi Jane's daughter had left her son in Mi Jane's care, and of course this little guy was Dejin. Every time I looked at Mi Jane, I felt a kind of helplessness, a mixture of pity and guilt. Mother-in-law felt differently. That hag of a woman! Surely you can see she's playing games, making everyone feel sorry for her just so she can take advantage, she would say, or words to that effect. In reality, it was all about the mayor. A few years ago, he'd been enterprising enough to commercialize the village's meju production. On top of our annual supply for personal use, prepared once per year, meju was now produced throughout the winter as well, when farmers had little else to do. Care was taken only to plan work on days without demons, so as to avoid the interference of so-called sun. When Mina and I had first moved to the village, I remember asking, Omo, what actually are sun? Evil, evil spirits. Demons who come to our village to ruin things. So it's better to make our meju on days they're not around. That's the beginning. Now the poem I would like to read as a tribute to Cha jung -ne, who sadly passed away earlier this year. The original is called Oluk Toluk, and the translation is called Zebra Lines. Zebra Lines. Shall I? Can I say hi? A moment's hesitation, 
as he rides the escalator up, and I ride it down. Shall I turn around and run up? Pretty sure it's him. His shoulders sagging, his torso rounded and I remember. He wears an expression on his face that I don't know. In his plastic bag, trailing behind, a box of wellmen wobbling around. These thoughts of mine, as if stepping over the shadow of a tree cast on a sunlit road, zebra lines climb up my body. Ah, forget about it. They lie back down. My momentary thoughts, they rise to the surface while we continue to go our separate ways. You sip whatever is in your paper cup, and when you reach the bottom, at the sound of slurping air, you squash and toss it. Thank you for listening.